reloadable and relaunchable, and you might even be able to build one with things around your house. For this project, you're going to need a bottle of gas relief pills and a plastic champagne glass like the kind you'd get at the dollar store. Pushing the bottle into the glass, you can see they make a perfect fit, and you'll see why that's important in just a few minutes. Now, plastic champagne glasses usually come in packs of two for a buck, but they don't always look like this one. Some have slightly different textures or extra decorations for special occasions, but with a little ingenuity, you can probably make any variation work. Now, you might have already guessed this is going to be the nose cone for the rocket, and we don't need the base, so let's go ahead and chop it off now with something like a hacksaw. Make sure to leave about half an inch of the tip, then find a sheet of sandpaper so you can carefully begin sanding the plastic stub down until it follows the contour of the glass. I'm using 150 grit sandpaper, and after a couple minutes, you can already see the nose cone starting to take shape and looking a lot more aerodynamic. Now, if you go one step further and sand the whole thing with 400 grit, it'll help the paint stick better. But either way, before you paint the nose cone, it's a good idea to rough up the inner wall near the top. Roughing it up now will save you a step when we attach it to the rocket later on. Alright, it's time for a paint job, and I went with this yellow gloss spray paint because it's made for bonding to plastics and dries in 15 minutes or less. I recommend going outside and holding it with something like a foam noodle when you spray it because this way you don't make much of a mess. Alright, with the nose cone drying, let's move on to modifying the plastic pill bottle next. You can find these bottles at your local super center for around 88 cents, and if you pull the label slowly and carefully enough, you should be able to get it off without leaving any sticky residue behind. Now, we're only after the empty bottle here, so unless you're having issues with gas, go ahead and get rid of the pills any way you think is safe. Next, you'll need to carefully cut the bottom of the bottle, and for that, I'm using an X-Acto knife. A box cutter or a pair of scissors will work as well, but whatever you use, the goal here is to cut the edges straight and cleanly as possible. Now, the threads on the bottleneck have to come off as well, and I found a good tool for removing them is a flat metal file. Set the bottle on a flat surface and grind away at the threads until they're flat, but try to keep the bottom ridge untouched. And while you're here, go ahead and sand a rough patch into the inner wall of the bottle like you did for the nose cone, then use 150 grit to rough up the sides of the bottle as well. Alright, let's move on to building the screw lock motor mount next. You'll just need a 3 quarter inch PVC coupling, which you should be able to find at any hardware store, and it's important to get the one that has the threads on the inside. Use your sandpaper to rough up the outside of the casing, then cut half an inch off the tip of the threaded end. This piece will become the quick connect adapter that our sugar motors will screw onto when we're getting the rocket ready for launch. Now the body tube of the randomizer rocket is made with a plastic golf club protector you can find at any sporting goods store. And while you're out running errands, stop in at the dollar store for a roll of wrapping paper as well. You don't actually need the paper though, just 4 inches of the brown paper tube that's inside it, and one roll will give you 9 of them. Alright, the next thing we need is the fin cutting template, which was designed and donated by my friends at SonicDad.com. And I put a link in the description to where you can get it for free. Go ahead and cut out the fin location template as well, and wrap it around the golf club tube, then tape it so both ends meet perfectly together. Now measure 20 inches up from the end of the tube, and use the edge of the paper template as a cutting guide for making a clean cut. Your body tube should now be 20 inches long, and if it is, then rough up the inner walls of both ends with 40 grit sandpaper. Now get your two-part epoxy ready, because the time has come to cement it together. Before you epoxy anything, it's always a good idea to do a practice run to see how everything's going to fit. So slide the 4 inch brown tube inside the rocket body first, followed by the PVC motor mount next, which you can see is actually a bit too wide. But check this out, you can stretch out the bottom of the tube using the tip of the nose cone, and just like that, your PVC coupling makes a perfect fit. Okay, let's go ahead and mix a generous amount of epoxy, but be prepared to work fast because you really only have about 5 minutes before it hardens up. I tried using a popsicle stick to apply a copious coating to the outside of the brown paper tubing first, then added a coating to the outside rim of the motor mount next. The paper tube goes inside the rocket body until it's about half an inch past the end, and after adding a coat of epoxy right below it, you'll need to push the threaded PVC coupling in next. You probably noticed I'm using a 3 quarter inch PVC riser to guide the motor mount inside the tube. It's a good tool to use because you'll have a lot more leverage for making sure your motor mount goes in straight. Clean up the epoxy with a paper towel, but before it hardens, it's really important to set your rocket tube on a flat surface and roll it back and forth. Watch the PVC riser and make minor adjustments to keep it straight, because that'll help ensure the thrust is in line with the center of the rocket. Five minutes later, you can go ahead and connect the parachute container to the other end. Now to accommodate the mouth of the pill bottle, you're going to need to spend a bit of time working this other end over the plastic cone a bit to stretch it out so it'll fit. Push the parts together to double check they actually fit, and if they do, then go ahead and add some epoxy and push the two together. Give the bottle a little twist for better adhesion, then go ahead and clean up any overspill with a fresh clean paper towel. With the epoxy starting to set, let's prep the bottle for painting, and all I'm using to protect mine is a piece of paper and some masking tape. Spray paint the bottle black to match the rocket body, then set it in a safe place where it can sit for about 20 minutes undisturbed. Okay, with the paint drying on the bottle, we can get to work making the rocket fins next. 
You're going to need a large piece of medium weight poster paper from the dollar store and a black coroplast signboard, which I found at a local sign supply company for $1.88. If you want to save a couple bucks, you could always reuse those plastic signs that seem to be everywhere after a local election. Now it's a good idea to stick your fin cutting template and the shock cord templates onto a piece of poster paper before you cut them out. And while you're here, you may as well cut a strip of poster paper 4 inches wide by 15 and a half inches long because we'll be needing that later on. The rocket fins are made out of the signboard, and for best results, I recommend using a black sharpie, an exacto knife, and an old hacksaw blade. Place the template on the signboard so the leading edge lines up exactly with one of the corrugated lines, then make sure it doesn't move. Carefully trace the template with a fine tip marker and make sure you get the little notch there on the side as you do. Now if you use the back of your hacksaw blade as a straight edge, it'll help guide the blade of your knife and give you the straightest and cleanest cuts possible. Do the same thing three more times so you end up with four fins and take time to do it right because quality counts. Alright, now that you got your four basic fins cut, it's time to add some extra features. Carefully cut out the corrugated rib on the leading edge by sliding your blade along the inside edges. When it's removed, you should be left with an extra deep channel at the top of the fin. Now try to crease the leading edge by sliding your thumbnail up along the top edge of the plastic, and as you do, you should see the tip bend slightly inward. When you've done the same thing to the other side, your rocket fin will have a nice little knife edge point to it. Now to make these fins look extra awesome, let's try adding some stickers to give them a bit of color. I printed these custom decals on a sheet of label paper and sprayed them with a clear, weather-resistant coating. And when they're folded over the leading edge and pressed down flat on both sides, they're finished. You can see how adding decals will give your fins a really clean and professional look, as well as keep the edges sharp and aerodynamic at the same time. Okay, with all the fins finished, there are just a couple things left to do to get our rocket ready for flight. Cut off a piece of scrap signboard the same width as your hacksaw blade, then pull the guts out of a plastic disposable pen and cut them all into one-inch pieces. You'll need two of each, so set them in a safe place, then bring back the body tube, because this is the part where it all comes together. Roll up the 15 and a half inch piece of poster paper you made earlier, and shove it down inside the tube, making sure it overlaps slightly and locks into position, just underneath the rim of the pill bottle. Now if you still have your fin location template on the tube, slide it to the bottom so it's about an inch above the motor mount, then use your sharpie to mark the top and bottom of each line. Remove the template and use your hacksaw blade to carefully scratch straight lines of the plastic in line with the marks you just made. And while you're here, it's a good idea to scratch two more grooves at 1 inch and 12 inches from the bottom, exactly in line with each other and perfectly centered between two fins. Just for fun, I tried heating up a screwdriver and poked holes into the plastic where the fins connect. This simple modification will bind the rocket body to the fins, making sure they don't come apart without a fight. Alright, the time has come to grab a hot glue gun and stick everything together. Look closely at your fins for the little marking you made when you trace it out and line it up exactly with the bottom of the rocket tube. Add a dribble of hot glue from the marking on the fin all the way down to the tip, then add another bead of glue along the line you scratched into the rocket body. Now double check the marking on the fin is at the back of the tube and carefully press the base of the fin into place and hold it securely for 20 to 30 seconds. Do the same thing with the other three fins, then take a look from the back to see if they're straight and in line with each other. If they are, then go ahead and attach the launch lugs next. I glued the 1-inch pen pieces to the signboard scraps first, then glued the improvised lugs to the other two markings scratched into the body tube earlier. Before your glue hardens, make sure the pen tubes are perfectly in line with each other simply by looking through one end and checking the symmetry. At this point, you can add the body tube stickers, which I like to center along the upper launch lug. The last sticker goes around the base of the rocket just above the fins, and with that, you're just about done. All that's left to do is attach the parachute and the nose cone. I got some quarter inch braided elastic cording from the craft section of a superstore and tied a simple knot into the end so it formed a loop. Now the tighter you can pull the knot, the better it'll hold, and to clean it up a bit, just use a pair of scissors to trim off the excess. Measure and cut the other end at 8 inches, then go ahead and lay a bead of hot glue down the center of one of the poster board reinforced shock cord mounts. The open end of the elastic cord needs to be pressed into the glue so it stretches across two of the squares, and it's helpful to lay two more beads of glue along either side of the cording so you can fold the end piece into the center, trapping the cord and glue inside. Fold it again so you're left with a single square, then press it together firmly to finish it off. This 8 inch cord is the one that attaches to the nose cone, so add a liberal amount of hot glue to the back of the pad, then press it to the rough patch on the inside wall of the nose cone until the glue cools. Do the exact same thing with the other shock cord mount, but this time use a 16 inch piece of cording and mount it to the inner wall of the plastic fill bottle. The very last step is to add one of the parachutes I showed you how to make in a previous project. These simple chutes are made from dollar store table covers and not only work for the randomizer rocket, but can be used to make sky balls as well. I made 8 of them for a dollar and I'm confident you can as well, so look for how to make simple chutes and sky balls in other project videos. Now the parachute attaches to the rocket with two swivel clips for redundancy, so you'll need to thread the loops from the rocket body and the nose cone over the two hooks, then close them up. 
With the cords attached and double checked, go ahead and fold your parachute up by grabbing it in the center and pushing all the air out first. I folded mine in half, then rolled it up to the strings and held the bundle together simply by wrapping the lines around the outside of the chute. But before you push the parachute into the rocket, make sure to use about 6-8 to eight pieces of rocket wadding first. This will help protect your parachute from the blast of hot gases that shoot out during the ejection charge. And of course there's a cheap and easy way to make your own rocket wadding with paper towels and baking soda, which I'll show you how to do in a separate project video. With your parachute tucked snugly inside, simply collect up any excess cording and push it into the nose cone, then gently slide the cone into position at the top of the rocket. With that, you're finished. You just built your own homemade rocket from scratch. So let's go see what it can do. Your randomizer rocket is designed to be powered with the screw lock sugar motors made in a previous project. However, a safer and more reliable method is to use commercially available rocket motors like an Estes D12-3 or an E96. Commercial rocket motors are a lot more expensive, but they're probably the better choice for amateur rocketry, especially if you're just getting started. And remember, your rocket will shoot over a thousand feet high and can take up to five minutes to float back to the ground. So make sure to use common sense where and when you launch, because any project you try is at your own risk. Well, now you know how to convert a plastic champagne glass and a handful of other random materials into a powerful randomizer rocket. And if you try making a whole bunch at the same time, you might be surprised to find out they only cost about $5 each. Well, that's it for now. If you like this project, perhaps you like some of my others. Check them out at thekingofrandom.com. Hey guys, this project was part of a design collaboration I did with my friends at sonicdad.com. Please check them out and subscribe to their YouTube channel. If you remember the collaboration we did last year with the Assassin's Micro Crossbow, then you'll understand why I chose Richie from the Sonic Dad team as my partner for building a rocket. He's a creative genius in all respects and has an amazing mind for thinking outside of the box. Together, Richie and I designed a really cool launch pad, the randomizer rocket, and a recovery parachute that all work impressively well. We've done around 50 launches so far, and he's already got detailed videos and instructions on how to make them at sonicdad.com. I highly recommend you support and subscribe to Sonic Dad, because they're one of the channels I follow, and these guys have my highest respect. I know them personally, and they're on a mission to help people turn off the TV and go make something cool instead. Thank you for watching and supporting these projects. I appreciate you, and I'm excited to see you around for the next project video. I'll talk to you then.